Hi guys, I was given an interesting problem by one of my blog readers. Basically, this person has a spreadsheet with data, I guess you could say scattered around on different sheets. And what he wants to be able to do is to have a drop down box and use the drop down box to select each of these different sources of data or maybe get a reference to them or perhaps write them somewhere else. So what I've attempted to do is to emulate the problem that this person has and maybe show some good design tips at the same time. So what I've done is I have created a, a spreadsheet with four data tabs, namely Southeast, Southwest, Northeast and Northwest working from right to left. So if we look at the Southeast tab, you can see that there's five rows in total, including a header. However, there are four rows of data pertaining to Southeast. Similarly, the Southwest tab has three rows of data for Southwest. The Northeast tab has six rows of actual data and the Northwest tab has four rows of actual data. So in the range area E1 through G5, I've created a lookup list. Column E will show you the uh, drop-down names. So basically the Northwest, the Northeast, the Southwest, and the Southeast will appear in the drop-down list. To the right of it, we have the corresponding sheet name and the corresponding range that corresponds to the address of the data in each of the tabs. Within row eight, uh, cell B8 will contain the outcome output of the drop-down list which will be a numerical index and based on that numerical index I will put a VLOOKUP into cell C8 which will refer to column F on the lookup table between E1 and G5 and cell D8 will refer to column G on the lookup range. It's going to be quite funky. Let's see how it goes. So here we go. Let's first of all create a combo box. So we go to the developer menu and then we click insert. In this instance, I'm going to choose a form control, but we could just as easily use an ActiveX control. So I'm going to draw a combo box. Then I'll double click on it or right click rather, format control. I will choose the input range to the control as being the dropdown name, E2 to E5, and that will populate the dropdown with the captions that are in column E. And I'm going to set a cell link as being cell B8 and then click OK. Let's just test this initially. So if we click on the drop down and we choose Northwest, you'll see one has been populated to cell B8. Choose Southwest and position three has been populated to cell B8. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to index my list with these particular values. I'm also going to range name this particular list and I'm going to use a VLOOKUP to drive this process. So I make cell B8 absolute because I will be copying this uh, VLOOKUP into D8 as well. I press the F5 key to get the range name data lookup that I've just created a moment ago. And for the sheet chosen, well, that's going to be column F, which is the sheet name. And what we're going to do here then is take an offset of three because column D lookup value is, up, is position one. So it's not an offset of three, it's a position of three. So what we're going to do here is put in a position of three for the sheet name, because as you can see, sheet name is in the third column of the selected data and we always set range lookup to false. What this means is if we don't get an exact match we turn an error because what we don't want is a shall we say a false positive whereby for example three doesn't exist but the VLOOKUP instead returns the closest value which would be un incorrect. If you want southeast you don't want the southwest to appear. You want an error if the data is missing. So we hit return and now we have Southwest. So now I'm going to copy the VLOOKUP into the next column. And then I'm going to change the offset from three to four. And now we have the range chosen as being A2 to F4. So if we test what we've done so far, if we choose Northwest, we've got Northwest chosen, and we have a range of A2 to F5, which corresponds with the lookup. And if I choose Southwest, Southwest is chosen with a range lookup of A2 to F4. So the next stage now is to write a VBA macro to make use of all of this information. 
and we will write our output to row 12. So we'll put the header on row 11. So here we go. First of all, we've got to assign a macro to this drop down button. So we right click, click assign macro, then click new. Here I've just deleted an old macro and I'm typing a new one, sub get range. So we've created our macro header. Now let's um, set up some stuff on the front sheet. We're going to range name C8 to sheet chosen. And we're going to range name D8 to range chosen. And we're going to range name B12 to put range. So now let's set up a few variables. So here we dim range get as range. Similarly, range put as range. So range get will be the source location and range put is where we're going to actually put the data to. Then dim range chosen as range and range sheet chosen as range. Then set range chosen equals this workbook.names and that will contain the chosen range from the index. Um, in this instance, we've range named, as explained earlier, a range called range chosen. And you're getting some useful coding um, knowledge here. So a good way of assigning a range is, for example, using this workbook dot names, the name of the range, and then you put in period refers to range. The IntelliSense makes it a bit easier to find these particular aspects. And similarly, set range sheet chosen is the range name we've set up earlier for the sheet chosen. So this workbook that names sheet chosen dot refers to range. And that creates a range object which is assigned to set range sheet chosen. So here we're going to assign this workbook dot worksheets range sheet chosen dot value, which is the contents of the sheet chosen cell, which is driven by the drop down box. And then we're basically using indirection here. So this workbook dot worksheets sheets range sheet chosen dot value dot range 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 chosen dot value we are now going to assign the excel range name put range to the vba variable range put we're using this workbook that names put range and then the property dot refers to range we then adjust the row size and the column size of range put using the dimensions of range get this is a very useful technique where you use objects to talk to one another and you can build some quite dynamic stuff doing this this command clears out the range that we're going to write to but by offsetting the current region range by one it preserves the header which is essential. So the whole purpose of this exercise was to write various pieces of data from different ranges to a front sheet based on the contents of a drop down list. So here rather than using the clipboard we're going to use VBA to write the contents of the cells directly and that's what range put dot value equals range get dot value is doing. It's saying get the contents of the cells within range get and write them to range put. Here we are setting the various range variables to nothing and that's just good housekeeping. The um, colon you see here normally not recommended but it allows you to put various lines of code on the same line. Seeing as these lines are not um, critical to the application logic it's just tidier to do it this way but I wouldn't do it this way for general code writing. We're on the home stretch now let's see if it works. When we choose the northwest the code runs and the northwest is brought back. Similarly the northeast is brought back when we choose that. Southwest just three rows and the southeast will give us four rows. That's it guys.